I really like thing. what you're trying to do over there, Paul. Yeah, yeah, it's the worst thing you said a musician. I really like what you were trying to do. It's the worst thing. <laughs> nice <laughs> chop. <laughs> it almost sounded great. You almost. It was a pressure playing with you tonight. <laughs> Pleasure? No pressure. No pressure. Dennis Chambers says, when's the last time we played together? Oh, yeah, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. In other words, you were so bad, we're done. Yeah. Yeah. I did a gig with a guy one time, and it really hurt my feelings. I said, so how was that? And he looked at me, and he goes, you're better than you were an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I love that guy. He, he made an impression. We're still talking about him. <laughs> Thank you, Danny Hamlin. <laughs> Wouldn't you know, it be worse so if he said you were better an hour ago than you are now? Yeah, he's like, you're better than you were an hour ago. Like, it, like you were an awful an hour ago, but now you're just... You're still bad, but it's all right. That's nice. Yeah, That's thank you, Danny Hamlin. That's you nice. never forget those things. A, he keeps saying the name over and over again. I just want him to get a shout out if he's watching this. <laughs> so, in the Google search for his name, you're going to come up. Thank you very much for ruining my life. Now, I, I love Danny, yeah, but I'm in tune and you're not, so eat it. No. <laughs> all right, so there's Early been a lot of... Then? A lot of guitar playing talking tonight and really what we're doing are, are building the, the idea here is we're building tools that Emil can do what he's doing or Bowser can do what he's doing or, or I can do what it is it's, it's meant to be a tool that you can do whatever you want with the guitar and so from that side there must be questions that people have um, about things they want to know that is in that long list that I started at the beginning of things so I want to open this up to questions because I find that a wonderful discussions get started out of nothing, which is just good fun. Yeah, you can start. Wow. All right, you had to go there, didn't you? Uh, yeah, so CITES decided, without asking the industry in a way, they said, not only do you need a document to import it into the United States, but now every single guitar that has a piece of East Indian Rosewood that leaves a country has to have a government document. And not, not the load of wood. When you bring it in, it's the load of wood. Now it has to be an individual document. I need one document for the entire cargo, but now I need a single document for every guitar that leaves, Great. which means Reverb can't ship guitars overseas anymore yeah. without the documents they're probably going to change it because they didn't really understand that East Indian Rosewood, I, I, I see it. what? I just heard that they might change it due to the fact that the furniture takes out so much more of the No, workers. the furniture industry is, it was started because of the Chinese furniture industry taking too much of the Vietnamese Rosewood, which the guitar industry doesn't even use. But they decided that because you couldn't tell the different Rosewoods apart, they would put it on all of them. And there are Rosewoods that are literally almost white in color, called tulip wood, just things that are jet black, which is African black wood, which is what they make oboes out of. So it goes the whole gamut, and, and let's just say that we were the first people in line to get our documents. So we're shipping guitars overseas every day. We've got documents for every single guitar. Uh, they were very cool and said, any Rosewood you have in stock, we're gonna I'm automatically give you documents for all that stuff. And so they're trying to make sure that there is not a, uh, a complete degradation of the rosewood that's available. The problem is when they do it, they send us off into the dark ages and we're starting to look at woods they never considered. Hmm. And uh, there's some woods that are replacement woods that Fender has decided to use as striped ebony and palo which is a catch-all term for many different species. But... <clears throat> Let's just say we, we, the guitar industry is now talking directly to the head of CITES and we're working on a, a, a really good solution. Your job's to not worry about it. If we shipped it here, it was legal, and if we shipped it overseas, it was legal. How many guys get all their info from uh, a computer chat room and stuff? So I, I mean, I, I get a lot of it from that, but how many people go on there and do that and let that be the bend all, be all of anything? Don't. Um, because a lot of times, just because a critic gave an album a bad review, you may love that album. Um, same thing with a guitar. Um, 
everybody likes different things. Like when you read the review of a guitar, like there are certain things we all want. We all want pickups that work and, and a nice neck, but what is a nice neck? Your hand may be bigger than mine, your hand may be smaller. Those things are all different. They're differences that I get so irritated, even with like these guitars. These are both PRS guitars. They differ in construction, obviously. One probably was more painstaking to make, so it would cost more. This doesn't make it better, but for what he does, it's more suited for his style, so most definitely it's better for that. So let me, let me go a little farther to what he's pointing at. One of the people in my family got sick, and Johns Hopkins um, told us, whatever you do, don't go on the internet because it's old information. You gotta be really careful. What's go really going on behind the scenes is not exactly what's going on. So I'm telling you that, that all the companies are trying to do the right thing. Uh, we found several replacements, and we're not gonna make you an inferior guitar. We're just not gonna do it. So does that answer your Rosewood question? All right, so, you, but you had a question in the back. No, actually, my little guy right there, I want to talk about it, but he's Michelle. <laughs> All right, so who's the little um, guy? This little blonde guy, you can't see him, but I'll ask for him. He wants to know if there's any, if PRS has ever considered making a junior for the smaller guys. All right, so first of, all, first of all, you don't have to be his spokesman. <laughs> so what is your name? Brayden. Hey, Brayden. Okay, so you yell the question. Not her. <laughs> Are you ever gonna consider making a junior size PRS? So, what is your definition of junior size? Three quarter. Three quarter? Right, so, if you multiply everything times 0.9, the guitar is actually pretty small. A three quarter guitar is not something that is sold in our industry, except I think Fender still sells a Mustang. Uh, I've been asked just a little bit. When I was at Braden, when I was a kid, I've been playing since, how old are you, Braden? 10. 10, right on, brother. Um, when I started playing, I was your age, maybe a little younger, and I bought a, a I don't even know if they still make them anymore, but there was a Warspring guitar, and the the dude at the music store wanted to sell me a small scale one, and I, that, that was a big selling point to me at the time, but my dad said, hey man, you're gonna get bigger. Yeah. That guitar's scale is gonna stay the same and your hands are gonna get bigger. I think you'd be doing yourself a disservice to get a smaller guitar, buddy. Um, I think your hands will be fine and you'll really be, you know, doing the, whatever you learn will be on the same thing. It won't be transitioning. All these frets are further apart. Your hand will already be used to it, Braden. You'll, You'll get it. I mean, it, it's cool for them to be that way, but, you know, get you, an, like, the SE1s are a great guitar, smaller, um, I don't want to say smaller scale, but they feel smaller. I don't know why. But they're a little lighter. They're one pickup. I think, you know, that might be a great place to start, but play a regular size guitar. I think Paul's going to let you feel one right now. No, I'm going to let you get my guitar. guitar. <laughs> get, grab your hand on that one. That, that's going to feel good to you. <laughs> That's a prototype you're holding. There are a lot of ten year olds that are playing unbelievable. Killing it. Killing, killing it. On big yeah. That's right. I think, you know, like you don't get a smaller car when you learn to drive. You just gotta Yeah, I'm not being a bud. I'm not trying to pick on brain or anything. I'm just saying like I was that kid. And my uncle okay, funny little story. My my cousin's left handed. My uncle that taught us to play guitar is not. <laughs> My cousin changed guitar strings on my uncle's guitar. He got lit up. Y'all know what lit up means up here? He never changed strings again. He learned to play right-handed. You, you learn to adapt to what you got, but I, I think by playing a regular size guitar and getting your hands around it, and I can even direct you to some guys your age, um, like 12 or 13, that Paul hooked me up with in Dallas. Man, they're just killing it. Awesome. Derek started at 10. On a regular size guitar. By the way, they don't make left-handed pianos. That's right. <laughs> they don't make left-handed saxophones, do they? No, no. I'm trying to wrap my head around that. 